Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The Department of Trade and Industry has released the 2015 vehicle sales figures. Irma Fenter tells us more. Hi, Irma. Hi, Chanel. 2015 proved to be a bit of a mixed bag in terms of sales and exports. What can you tell us about that? We saw a general decline of 4.1% in new vehicle sales in 2015 compared with 2014. So that was quite substantial for the market. Um, they already experienced a decline in 2014 over 2013. So it's a tough market out there if you're in the uh, new vehicle market. Um, you can see that most of the segments went down. So that would be heavy trucks, medium trucks, and also passenger cars. However, light commercial vehicles that offered about the only light, uh, that was up 0.4%. So that would be your buckies and your minivans, your taxis, and your panel vans. So that showed some increase. Um, another piece of good news was that exports increased by more than 20%. So that reached more than 330,000 units. That's a new record for the South African industry. Why the decline in sales? Well, domestically, the market is really tough at the moment. You can see economic growth in South Africa is not, not really high. I mean, we the rumors of a recession last year. So you can imagine there's not a lot of disposable income. Interest rates are increasing. And with the RAND declining so sharply, you can also see that new vehicle prices are increasing rapidly, making it all really difficult for somebody to buy a new vehicle. So um, you can also see a buying down trend in the market. You can see instead of buying that really premium sedan, you may be going for a more mid-level sedan. Instead of a mid-level sedan, you may be looking at a really entry-level hatchback with all the bells and whistles, trying to just mitigate um, that monthly installment and trying to make that monthly installment lower. So you can see all of these trends indicating that the market's under pressure. Which brands were the big winners and losers in 2015 compared with 2014? You can see there's a big jump in entry-level cars. I think a lot of people went, went for value for money. So you can see that Datsun Go really reported very good sales, um, between 400 and 700 units uh, a month, for example. <coughs> and you'll see a lot of journalists actually criticize the vehicle for not being that safe. But people are obviously looking for, for that value option. You can also see that the Bucky War was won by Toyota Hilux over the Ford Ranger. The Ford Ranger launched a very strong challenge in 2015 um, against the Hilux, which was, of course, the best-selling vehicle over all segments in South Africa in 2014. But the Hilux came out on top. You can also see that the big sports cars, actually surprisingly, um, recorded a, a jump in sales. So it seems like if you had a lot of money, the market didn't affect you that much. So there was this increase in sales of Ferraris, and Maseratis, and of course Porsche recorded a healthy growth as well in sales. Then of course your, your losers. Um, it was more the importers that really struggled. I think the weakening RAND really took its toll. So you'll see that Associated Motor Holdings, which rep uh, reports their sales combined with AAD, which is a Chinese uh, importer, Recorded sales uh, lost about 10,000 units in sales. So they went from 70,000 to roughly 60,000 units for last year. So that's quite a drop. And it'd be interesting to see what this year will do to them in terms of um, um, their sales volumes. How did the electrical vehicle market fare? Well, electrical vehicle market was another surprise for 2015. Um, so you'll see that the BMW i3, which is a lovely little city vehicle, recorded a sale of more than 80 units. And you compare that to the Nissan Leaf, which uh, sold about 14 units in 2014, compared with more than 30, so I think 35 units for 2015. You can see that people are maybe taking to electric vehicles or they were just looking for a, a product more suited to their taste, who knows. But electric vehicles increased their sales in South Africa as well, which is also another surprise in a market that is seemingly so tough. What is the outlook for 2016? Well, it's quite a gloomy outlook. You'll see that the Association of Automobile Manufacturers say that it may be down 3 to 5%. There are a lot of factors that come into play, probably more magnified from last year. Again, increasing interest rates, pressure on disposable income, um, and people generally just having less money to spend on vehicles. So I think that buying downtrend will probably continue or just not buying at all or buying a used car, which we also saw in 2015, people moving away from the new vehicle car, new vehicle market. So all of that, those trends are probably likely to continue. And of course, the rand is weakening further. So I see some forecasts predict 19 rand to the dollar by the end of the year. So that would make it really tough on vehicle importers and even on local manufacturers because a last large part of their parts, of course, come in dollar priced. So that'll put a lot of pressure on vehicle prices. And um, <coughs> I would assume that if you want to buy a vehicle, maybe do it sooner rather than later. Exports, uh, again, may be a bright light at the end of the tunnel, and that's expected to be up more than 7% um, this year if all goes well. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next time for more news analysis.